Hello everybody, John Brewer here. This week we're going to go over gravity-based weapon systems in Space Engineers. Gravity-based weapons are essentially any weapon system that exploits Space Engineers' gravity mechanics. Broadly, gravity-based weapons fall into two categories. First, there are self-propelled weapons that use gravity engines for propulsion. These weapons usually have a gravity generator and artificial mass next to each other that provide the thrust for the missile's flight. The second category is the gravity cannon. The gravity cannon launches projectiles at a target. Let's talk about gravity engines first. In principle, gravity engines are very simple. The gravity generator accelerates the artificial mass block. The artificial mass block, in turn, imparts this inertia on the ship it is attached to, providing thrust. Somewhat counterintuitively, artificial mass blocks have an inertial mass of 4,445 kilograms, but a gravitational mass of 44,450 kilograms. The practical upshot of all this is that each artificial mass block in a ship provides 435 kilonewtons of thrust per g it is subjected to. For comparison, a large thruster provides a maximum of 1,200 kilonewtons, and a small thruster provides 100 kilonewtons. As a result, gravity-based engines have a thrust-to-weight ratio nearly four times that of regular thrusters. This impressive TW ratio makes them a great choice for missiles that need to accelerate to maximum speed very, very quickly. Next, let's look at gravity cannons. Gravity cannons are extremely versatile weapons. With a gravity cannon, the gravity generators are mounted on the firing platform. The projectile is accelerated up to its maximum speed before it leaves the launching ship's influence. Gravity cannon projectiles can be large or small ships fit with artificial mass. More commonly, though, gravity cannons launch items. Gravity-launched items have a number of novel properties. First, different types and quantities of items create different spread patterns. Second, because items are so small and fast-moving, the physics engine has difficulty simulating them. This effect can result in armor-penetrating shots, and is especially pronounced on multiplayer servers. Let's examine these weapons in greater detail. The first key element of these weapons is the barrel. The barrel is the path the projectiles are directed down to accelerate them to their maximum velocity. The barrel length needed to achieve maximum velocity is frequently underestimated. The barrel length is a function of the number of G's the gun can channel down the barrel. For a gun intended to accelerate projectiles up to 104.6 meters per second, you can simply divide 558 by the number of G's you provide to the barrel to get the necessary barrel length. So a 1G gravity cannon would require a 558 meter barrel. For our demonstrations, we have a 24G gravity cannon, which requires a 23.5 meter barrel. Now let's take a look at the actual firing sequence. First, the cannon needs to be loaded. You can manually load the cannon simply by dropping something at the end of the barrel. Alternatively, you can have a connector feed into the barrel with whatever items you want to fire. Note that you'll only be able to load projectiles the size the connector ejects, but for most items, that's all you'll want. The cannon can be either loaded with a single projectile, or can be packed with a number of projectiles. A single square projectile, like an ingot, usually fires in a straight line, and is suitable for precision firing. Round or multiple projectiles, like ore or stone, tend to collide with each other and the barrel wall, creating a more scattered cloud of projectiles heading towards the target. When the rounds reach the target, there are two distinct ways they interact. First, there's the impact damage. This is how you would probably expect the damage to occur. The projectiles bounce off the armor and deal damage based on their mass and speed. The second way damage seems to occur is when a projectile ends up inside a block. When a projectile appears inside another block, it destroys that block. It is worth going over how we think the physics system works at this point to explain both this damage profile and how gravity shots penetrate armor. Space Engineers uses a discrete stepped physics simulation. That means that each time it steps the simulation, a certain amount of time passes. Usually this time is just a small fraction of a second. Each step, the simulation moves each object a number of meters equal to its velocity times the length of time that has passed. If the new position of an object intersects part of another object, the game detects a collision and calculates damage and physical effects. Items, however, are very small and move very fast. The reason we have a speed limit in Space Engineers is, among other things, to ensure that ships don't pass all the way through each other in a single physics step, preventing the simulation from detecting a collision. 
As a result, they can move from completely outside a block to completely inside a block, or even completely through a block, in a single physics step. The practical upshot of which is gravity-fired items penetrate single block thick armor layers and explode deep inside a target. This effect is more pronounced on multiplayer servers. This phenomenon may be changed in future versions of Space Engineers, but for the moment it is one of the distinguishing tactical features of gravity cannons. Gravity-based weapons are also subject to interference from gravity emitted by target ships. While missiles and ship-type projectiles can deactivate their artificial mass blocks en route to the target, items have no such ability. We'll discuss gravity-based defenses in a future episode. Until then, I'm John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.